time to put it somewhere. Okay, there we go. Recording. This is the Tuesday, uh, September 10. Package Managers Weekly Meeting on Sprint Planning Extraordinaire. We can talk about things. It's going to be great. Uh, I shouldn't, though, at least first, because I've been out for two weeks because of the death. It's not the death flu. It was four separate not happy things. Four flus. The death flu. Yeah. Wasn't even flu. It was strep. That's one of the things. Not great. So anyways, um, would anyone like to let the world know hey, Molly. what you're up to this week? Oh, hey, Molly. I'll also pull up the board for fun, but I don't know if y'all have even been using that over the last two weeks, so it might not actually be helpful. So. But yeah. Uh, someone, I'll just choose a person. Adeen, hey, how you doing? What's hey. up? Do you want to yeah. tell the world? <laughs> or tell me at least. Tell <laughs> the world. Um, so, remember where we were when you were, uh, when the last meeting occurred. However, uh, I've been working on the PubSub discovery things, um, or just discovery things in LibPDP in general, so that PubSub doesn't just assume you randomly bumble into peers uh, and that that will be enough. Um, I pushed out a couple PRs, adding some utilities to help make discovery easier, like, like caching and back off so that you don't keep querying over and over and over again and hammering whatever the system is when it's like, I just asked for data yesterday, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and now I'm doing some integration work into PubSub with the discovery, which should hopefully have a PR. PR has been ongoing for a while, but hopefully should have another draft that's like basically good to go soon. Uh, and then I think I'm going to get Grab to do a couple things related to IPFS pinning bugs and things of that nature for a little bit before I make my way back to IPNS pinning, which would be which would be the next thing on the list. Sounds good. Is the list still the list? So I can I'll go look at the usual list and see what's up. So the list is still the list, although I haven't added anything for IPFS pinning. I'm not sure if that's that is what I think I'm gonna be doing, but I don't know if that's strictly package manager related i mean it's it's important but i don't know if it's like falls into like one of our strictly on task buckets so uh, hector kind of needs some of these fixes uh for cluster um and cluster is kind of important for package managers so i think we can make the argument i thought team cluster was paused for the moment while we did these uh, other things team cluster is currently paused uh, but I know they have stuff ready, like waiting and ready to go on certain pinning features that we just don't have. Um, at least that's what I heard. As this is around like sharding up data between nodes. Yep, uh, that is true. Does that? I've been out for two weeks clearly, so I don't know what the latest is. But has someone pushed on that in the last couple of weeks? Uh, no, but uh, the work on or um, Adin's work on uh, pinning stuff would make pins more flexible so you could put arbitrary metadata in them or extra metadata. Uh, and then uh, that would uh, allow cluster to like have custom pins of, like, uh, like pin up to this depth and stuff like that. Yeah, no, which I agree is totally awesome. I'm just uh, trying to sort where I am from the last couple of weeks. So is that something, Adeen, that is just a uh, low hanging fruit to pick off or did some, or how did that end up on your list, basically, is what I'm trying to ask, because I'm curious. <laughs> uh, ended up on the list. Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, me. Uh, so uh, there is a bug um, that I wanted to fix, uh, and then that also dovetails into like, you duplicating a bit of code. Um, this also comes, like, or makes it with the fact that uh, like, this is something we've needed for a while. And like right now, we have problems where, like you can't list pins without it taking ages. Uh, when it, like, if you pin enough data, Pinning becomes really slow, 
Um, and there are other ways of fixing this. Don't require we work the entire system, but we kind of want to do it anyways. And we work the system makes it easier to fix this. Uh, otherwise, you have to like do a bunch of like Merkle jag messing. Yeah, it just it's not fun. Um, Seems like it'll be relevant for people who have, say, a large directory of files, like a large set of packages, such that they can list their set of pins, right? No, I see Andrew. Yeah, it, 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 so it depends. It depends. Like, if it's all in one big directory, this isn't that important. Um, if you have many, many pins, this is kind of important. At the moment, people like complain miserably about like they call pin add and it just takes ages to actually pin the damn thing. Um, this would fix that. Uh, like, but I don't. It depends on the package manager. It depends on how they work. It's like if everything is one big directory, it doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, I haven't seen that pop up with any system level package managers because is literally just one pin. Is this one of those things where we basically have the same people in the Go IPFS meeting and this meeting, and so people get pulled to both things? Is this falling into that category, it sounds like? Basically, but like my, my concern here is like, this is something that's more important than a lot of the IPNS stuff, where like the IPNS stuff like is a virtual, sorry, it's more pressing at the moment because the IPNS stuff is also is currently blocked on uh, like testing infra. Or like, here's like it's blocked on DHC improvements, which are blocked on testing and press. Um, so like we could start trying to make DHC improvements at this point, but it's like really hard to possibly actually test those and verify that we're doing the right thing. Um, so the hope here is to sort of like work on this for a bit. Well, we get the testing info in place, then we can fix the DHC problems. Then we can go back and like start working on like IPNS related DHC problems. Um, but otherwise, we're kind of shooting in the dark. At least that's my opinion there. Um, the, the, like the other options were work on something related to GC. Um, uh, or like work on improving like MFS internals and stuff like that. Um, but this was the close, the closest to um, IPNS that we had because it enables things like, uh, well, it makes it easier to make things like IPNS follow, um, uh, or uh, sorry, uh, pin follow, where like you can say like, follow, like basically pin this thing, but follow this IPNS key, like keep on getting updates, which is also important for record, not important, but it's useful for package managers. Um, I would actually like to talk through these priorities with, uh, Andrew a bit because like I want to make sure that we are targeting something that is useful um, and if there's something that's more useful then we can pivot uh, I don't yeah sorry I know Eddie hasn't started working on this yet <laughs> it's all um, good, catch up for me and also all the other things Adin, go ahead yeah no yeah exactly like whatever seems like highest priority you'll just sort of move to that um, it'll help to know Doing the pinning things will help a little bit in just terms of like getting me more familiar with the area of the code when I have to do the IPNS pinning things. Those shouldn't be so so hard or so bad. It's there's just some like if we don't feel the need to be perfect about it, I'm pretty sure we can just get stuff done because there's there's things later just like, oh, the interfaces don't allow for third party republishing, but everything else does. Uh, part um, of this is also named pins, yeah. uh, which annoys people all the time when the fact we don't have them. Um, well, which I think sure. could, could like significantly improve the UX around pack managers, but yeah. yeah, there's lots of things that annoy lots of yeah. people all the time. So, yeah. it, you but know, the question is like, what what, is what, what, what annoys? Decide what to do next. Yeah, go ahead. No, but like, what, what annoys package maintainers? That that's really the question here. Uh, so like the the, the uh, yeah, the theory behind that was that like we wanted to have name pins to have pin follow so that we can atomically like pin and unpin things at the moment like. Um, uh, if you pin something and then uh, I pin something else and then they happen to like point to the same thing at one point, or sorry, if I pin, if I call pin follow on like some IPNS record, you call pin follow on some IPNS record. And then at some point they converge and point to the same thing and then they diverge. Um, and then like I'll end up unpinning your thing uh, like as I like unpin something and repin the next thing. Or like pin in the, uh, the the new thing that this uh, IPNS record points to, which we obviously don't want. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this is all that useful for package managers, which is why I would like to talk this through with uh, Andrew. Yeah. Um, no, we, sounds like but, next steps are to take that part offline because, like, this sounds super interesting, yeah. but I think I would parse it better if it was written down. Yeah. Um, well, actually, and we can have a discussion about that. that was going to be my question. Uh, Stephen, is the the logic behind all of this in a like short paragraph anywhere, or no? It's just a conversation. From no, me. this is a conversation with the dean. Okay. Um, cool. So we'll, yeah. we'll follow up on that later. And note that Andrew wrote a thing in the group chat there about IPFS add. So my question is, is this the same or different than the IPFS add improvements that we had on the uh, This is different. different. Um, so yeah. that, like, 
IFS ad was on the table. That was the like work on uh, MDNS stuff. Um, I, I do think that is probably more pressing. Um, I didn't want to work on this because it's closer to IPNS and it dumps into like IPNS follow stuff. Yeah. Um, but, Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll find a time to chat separately and all that. Uh, probably the action is, you know, Adeen, Steve, maybe Andrew, me, that kind of thing. And we'll sort out what that looks like. And I'll write myself a note so I remember that thing. Um, cool. Anything else, Adeen? And thank you for the background, both of you. You're set? Okay, choose. Nope, your that's answer. it. There are some specs. They've been published cool. or almost. Yeah. What? Okay. Well, they're either PR'd or they're merged. It's just cool. depending. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Choose your the sorry person that has to go next. <laughs> uh, Andrew, you haven't been here for a while. I bet you have lots of updates. Uh, not on the um, board, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been working through today. Um, I have tried to write up the kind of outline of the thing I already did. <laughs> um, going backwards a little bit, but essentially the like hypothesis and the setup for an experiment for this um, release review system that I've built and. Um, I'm going to use that and it needs to be squished because it's quite long right now as um, the kind of introduction for onboarding some people into the system and using it. I'm already using it for itself now. So it's kind of snake eating its own tail. Uh, but uh, I definitely want to spend this week getting um, the messaging right and then onboarding some people um, so that can actually like start to get real good feedback loops going with them and feeling the the pain involved in doing it if there is any or if um, and actually like get the experiment going now that I have enough to to do that um, uh, I can link to the uh, to what I've been writing up um, but it's not quite finished um, and it doesn't have any like explanation or links into the actual system so what I was going to do next was record a short screencast uh, that basically goes steps through the what I've written up and then shows a real example using the actual system um, so that people can kind of easily watch that five minutes and go like, oh yeah, okay, I see why this is interesting and I see how this is relevant. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, get involved in the sense of I would like to try using it um, and then start to interview those people and like get their feedback and, and go from there. Uh, do I need to Yeah, choose your someone? person. Dirk is next on my row. Hey, everyone. Um, so I've had a pretty busy couple of weeks since I saw you, Michelle. Um, so let's see, on Monday, I gave a presentation about BitSwap, <clears throat> just kind of explaining what it is and the improvements that we're making. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I got some really good feedback, actually, from, uh, from Molly and Stephen and a couple other people. Um, so thank you guys for that. And what else have I been doing? So I'm working on my proof of concepts for some of the ideas that myself and Stephen came up with <coughs> for improving uh, BitSwap performance. Um, is this call being recorded? Can I talk about our collaboration? The call is being recorded. Uh, we can pause it. Oh, it's okay. I can, I can talk in general terms. Basically, um, our collaboration partner wanted us to uh, in order to kind of move forward with the project into the next quarter, we had to hit a performance target. <clears throat> and um, it looks like we've now hit that target. So uh, that's, that's sort of good news. It's not 100% sure that we'll be able to move forward, but anything is pretty good. Um, but anyway, I'm going to continue. Let's pause and say, when's the last time we heard, like, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, unhappy about hitting a performance target? <laughs> High five, team. We're doing it. Getting there. Uh, uh, it I have to say, he has also been doing a ton of work, uh, and he's kind of like every day saying, like, hey, what can I do, what can I do today? 
really bad. Um, someone's got a noisy mic. Uh, yeah, so in the meantime, I'm just kind of fixing up the proof of concept to make it uh, to like test it properly and to implement it properly because what I what I had was really thrown together. So I'm expecting to get most of the way towards finishing that off by the end of the week. Um, it might bleed into next week a little bit. One more update is that I'm going to be out on Monday. Any questions? Sparkle all fingers. Right. That's all. Pick a person. <laughs> uh, Dominic, what are you up to? Sure. Um, so I've got a bit of bad news here. Uh, this is more of a non-update than an update. Um, basically, it's been brought to my attention that I am failing to meet expectations on this effort. So what? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the case. I, I don't disagree with this. Um, it is the situation. Um, so I basically have an ultimatum where I need to finish this or not. Um, I have to make that decision kind of today. Um, I'm eager to try and get this accomplished, uh, but I, I've spoken to a number of people about this, and they're reasonable people, and, and they're not very confident in it. So that's really all I can say is that I've, I've not met expectations up to this point and I'm going to try to fulfill the expectations that are there now, but what can I say? I've made empty promises already and tried and failed already. So that's that, but I am not going to be deterred by that. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> I don't know who's left to go. <laughs> Dom, is there anything we can do to help? Now nah, y'all will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I'll bother you later. Uh, I guess I can talk. Let's see who else is on. Oh, Alex, I suppose, has more than me. Probably. Hi. <clears throat> um, yeah, I feel I've drifted pretty far from the, the package managing call uh, recently. Um, I've been working on uh, getting more automation into the JSRPFS build because um, so I've taken over the release process for this, this iteration uh, and I'm trying to basically automate as much as possible because um, the first few steps are just, this is stuff that computers should do. We should be doing this as humans typing into machines. Crazy, crazy talk. Anyway, so um, that's what I've been working on. And uh, it is progressing, uh, but it's like, yeah. Uh, it's going to involve some trying to stabilize our interrupt tests a bit because they're pretty flaky. Because um, we want to, so the first few steps of the build are like make sure CI is green and make sure the interrupt test pass and all those kind of things. Like, well, we can run the interrupt test as part of our build process. Um, at the moment, it's just a repo that you check out and you run the test from. Uh, so adding, uh, like making it into a proper module um, that you can invoke from like the command line or something like that. Um, so then it just becomes a command line tool which you can run against Go and JS really easily. Uh, you don't have to fiddle around with a lot of the commands that were in the readme, um, which would be super useful. Um, so doing some of that is basically why I'm at. Any questions? Yeah. She's like, can you, can you pay more attention to your email? And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> so hard. Can you pay more to do an email, please? But it was right on cue. We asked if there were yeah. more questions, and then there was a question. It was like. I think your settings were correct because we could hear you too. Just maybe somebody walked right into the like headphone. Whatever. There are some people here who are very good at projecting. <laughs> Problematic. Bounces off the, the window behind me and then straight into the. Well, into the Apparently, they have to shout. No one's checking the emails. Is anyone checking their emails? I, I feel personally attacked <laughs> <laughs> by this person who's not even on our call. Right. I mean, that's great because it's completely filtered out. So I can't really hear anything anyone outside of my headphones is saying. So you tell me, what did they say? Well, it sounds like we Someone all check our email. Checking their email. Yeah. Um, I have a quick, again, unpackage manager related question for you, Alex, um, kind of related to 
the the various JS IPFS things you've been pushing on, um, especially some of the async await stuff, um, which is yeah, my my vague expectation is that Alan is fully out on paternity leave now. So a number of JS IPFS related things are falling on your shoulders. Is is this correct? Is there any other any other update related to your capacity to participate on the package manager side of things? Um, or other things that we should make sure we're we're aware of. Yeah, I think it's going to be significantly uh, diminished. Um, Al is not yet a new dad, but he's preparing to. Like Lizzie was due yesterday, um, so it's, it's imminent. Like any any literally any second. All right, we will send yeah, him. So yes. Yeah. Lots of IPFS baby grows and that kind of thing. Like They're really expensive baby grows. Like we bought some uh, as a as a, like a present, a pre-baby present. I was shocked, shocked and dismayed. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I've been trying to step in. So like yesterday on the call, like the the, um, the core implementations call, I was trying to give uh, updates from the JS perspective, and you know, I'm basically going to pick up the stuff that Al was doing. So we're going to be trying to keep up up to date with like on top of the new issues that are opened, try to triage some of them and. You know, you know all that, all that kind of stuff. So, um, my capacity for non JS IPFS stuff will be significantly diminished. Okay, I will. I will be leaning on you for for various JS IPFS related things as well. Um, so, uh, I guess like I guess vice versa. Also, I'm here. Um, so, lean on me if there's anything that that I can do to help. But um, I'll sync up with you specifically, like over Slack, about um, adding adding more capacity to that team. Cool. Cool. We've got like four minutes. When does this call? Have we got another 15 or four since the time changed? I think we have another 15. I think 15. 45 minutes. 20. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Uh, who should follow up after Alex? Let's see. I suppose Molly, do you have any updates for the team while you're here? Um, um, if you come to the PLI PFS team meeting, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about OKRs, but we're nearing the end of the quarter. And that means that uh, this team in particular probably is a little, a little closer to the OKRs we took on since we reshuffled them a bit. Like, since we reshuffled them like two right weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, but uh, the generally other, we're starting to think about Q4 and Q4 has um, lab week in it and Q4 has, um, you know, a lot of holidays for various people. Um, so thinking about that, but um, that's something that's on my mind. Um, I'm also planning to um, chat with some of the, the collab folks that, that Dirk is working with to make sure that, um, you know, we, we do our best to continue that project forward um, as a collab, but I, I think there's been tons of amazing progress that we've already seen. And um, kind of regardless, I think it's something we will continue working on and pushing on. Um, because it's seen such amazing uh, returns in terms of the, the bit swap improvements that are happening there. So that's another thing that's on my agenda. I think that's next week that we're going to be checking in on that, I think. Um, and then other, yeah, I guess in general, like package manager related stuff, um, I think it'd be useful to just re reflect on on kind of the the set of goals that we we took for ourselves at the beginning of the quarter and like our understanding of the most important things for systems package managers and make sure that we have like that clear in the front of our mind as we're as we're looking into um the work that we're doing and and future um like projects to take on because i think that we we felt like we had a really clear understanding of that at the beginning of the quarter and i think that's somewhat like slipped out of the forefront of our minds or or our closeness to that um picture of of exactly what the the top blockers are is um is less clear than it was back then and so um i think maybe that's revisiting like re-tech talk on those things diving back into the corners or um rerunning one of our proof of concepts to with some of these changes to understand where where new bottlenecks are or um, something along those lines but uh something that i've been hearing kind of throw at the team and also feeling myself is that we're, we're a little bit further away from a direct understanding of those user pain points. And the, um, 
we should get closer to them so that we make sure that we're always optimizing for the most important stuff. Uh, sorry, let's see who else has not. Well, okay, well, I suppose I should tell you all what I'm planning on doing this week. I'm planning on doing this week the thin thing that I had hoped to do last week, but then was still super sick, um, which is catching up on all the things and updating my issues here. But also, um, I have a thing on the schedule, speaking of priorities and all that, to connect with um, um, Andrew on. Uh, so we have that draft diagram with the the uh, the service blueprint with the um, uh, system package managers uh, kind of semi user journey sort of work. I want to do the same thing for the database based ones, uh, which will be a little bit more complicated um, and then get that shared out a lot better than it already has been. Um, but then also I need to just check in with everybody and see where we're at because I've been gone for two weeks. So I did that a bit with um, Andrew yesterday. Um, Molly, I know we're trying to sort of time to do that as well. And of course, anyone else on the team that wants to chat, it sounds like um, I'll be bothering Dominic, maybe I'll bother Dean at some point, it'll be great, it'll just be lovely, and I'll hopefully get up to speed on all the things and then get back into helping push forward all the stuff that's been uh, talked about in our retros and other, other things about uh, things that are, you know, blocking the team from doing the best work that they feel they can. So help keep helping on those things. Um, yep, those are the things. I think for the week. Uh, let's see who else. Anyone else on the call that I missed that? Um, let's see, that wants to give an update. I'm not really sure who at this point, since you know it's a more open call, who should be giving an update in this call or not. So we think you should be, or if someone else wants an opinion or wants to ask someone else, uh, feel free. Or if uh, it's not even an update, if someone's on the call and you're here because you have a thing that you want to say, uh, we've got 15 minutes now. It seems like. Share. So I guess um, something I was just saying is I, at least for for me, I'm noticing that like this this the end of the month is approaching quickly because I'm going to be in uh, Macau for a conference at the end of the month, um, and I'll have some time to push on the, the discovery stuff and hopefully get that out the door. And then whatever the next thing I pick up, I think is probably just more related to whatever our next quarter's set of goals are and deciding like some of the things, whether it was like ad performance that for various reasons didn't quite end up happening this time or, or other things that, right. There's like a huge list of things to choose the priorities from. Um, Figuring out, like, I guess, figuring out what I need to do in like the next two weeks is like not so important in the scheme of really these are really just all about what's next quarter. So we can prioritize that however we want to. Sounds good. I'd be curious to uh, maybe after I'm caught up a little bit more, it doesn't feel like I have the, the right brain update to do it right now, but it might be useful to reserve some time before next quarter for us either remotely, uh, well, probably remotely, that's easier, just as a team to do some prioritization exercises as a group um, and see where that falls out with input, you know, present input wherever it stands from um, the research that Andrew's been doing and, and you all, what, have, what you've been learning and then go from there. But we will see, um, yeah. I mean, I'd love to see you all in person, but we got a lot going on and we have to actually do the work. So probably remote, <laughs> we can find like little chunks of time to uh, see, see each other quote unquote in person and, you know, hold the pets up and uh, also do lots of good, like distributed whiteboarding, that kind of thing. Anyone else? This might be the things then. Give it 10 more seconds, and if not, you all can go back to your day, I suppose. I'm looking forward to Andrew's screen recording.
It's so great. I was really excited. How excited? Uh, uh, you're just unrelated to that. I recorded a podcast interview on Sunday with uh, the previous leader of the Debian project, Chris Lamb, who is one of the developers on the reproducible build project. Um, we didn't talk about any IPFS specific stuff, but there was a lot of talk around um, uh, kind of sharing hashes of reproducible stuff and trying to reach consensus on things um, as, but he didn't, he wasn't like a hundred percent on all of the details. So he was very much like, Oh, I didn't want to speak for someone else. So uh, I'll give you links to point to other areas, but there was lots of interesting discussion there around um, system package managers seeing themselves as like part of a supported product rather than many language package managers will be like, Oh, this is a free for all. You can't like, you're not expected to be able to use all these packages together. There's no guarantees of like a working set. It's, it's, they're all independent. Whereas the Debian system has a release every 18 months. And that is one of the highest priority things is the experience of using the Debian system, which, uh, then may have like different other kind of auxiliary registries or um so like the unstable packages aren't uh don't have the same kind of priorities when it comes to deciding like uh should these things go in or not which is interesting because it's it's almost like what debian is saying for their mainline stuff is like this is there's more decisions that go into it um and we see it as like one big lump. There's also a whole load of automation that they have going from essentially like once something has been tagged as saying in some source control, this package is okay to be released. Everything, like all the flow from it going from that point all the way through to the like being available to app get install is automated. Whereas for lots of language package managers, it's like just post a table that you generated yourself on your laptop to this registry, and then that will be distributed out to other people. Um, so there's interesting levels of automation that don't exist in language package managers that possibly would be interesting to explore as well. Um, I will send around a link to the uh, to the episode once it has been edited because it's full of uh all kinds of weird sidetrack bits around university education and windows and things um but when that's uh when that's been edited then i will send it around and then there's a couple more interviews coming up for that podcast one with the um people behind packages the php package manager um who have like private packages the company hosting the thing and talking about the tension between the public and the private versions. And then I'm also trying to arrange a call with the Ethereum package manager people, um, which happens to use IPFS as their uh, storage for all of their archives. Um, so that'd be interesting. And if anyone wants to try and connect me with someone else that would be interesting to talk to, uh, then you know where to find me. Well, speaking very briefly, I don't know if there's anyone who, I feel like I've already called it out of this meeting, but um, Eric Meyer mentioned a, a conference that's happening in Berlin the 20th through 22nd of September called All Systems Go, which has a lot of people from various package manager communities. It has some people from OpenSUSE, it has some people from a number of other places whose names I'm forgetting all of a sudden. It also has like you know, gen general large industry players, um, but it is talking about like use of Go and various Linux system stuff. Eric is going, but if anyone else wants to go, I think it's 
it unfortunately conflicts with a number of people's schedules, but, um, and it's slightly short timing, but it seems like a cool conference. And um, if, if we do get a lot of people who want to attend, I'm sure we can do things like run a proto school tutorial or like otherwise um, be present in that area. We might find awesome people to join the community, um, help out with uh, this or just contribute their, their expertise in um, kind of the intersection of package managers and reproducible builds. So it could be cool. There's also lots of container related stuff looking at the schedule. I mean, to the extent that the Eric Myers, Michelle, to your question in chat, like to the extent that Eric is going and we'll talk to people, but like we don't have any one else to send and specifically do that sort of stuff. Got it. Um, I suppose a side note, you might prep him with anything he needs or remind him to <laughs> encourage people to apply for go positions. So, which that might be it. I don't know if he needs anything other than hi. Here's a link <laughs> right here in my hand. This is a link. <laughs> I think the referral program is going to incentivize them a little bit there. So, <laughs> uh, which sorry? <laughs> the referral program is probably going to incentivize him a bit. So, <laughs> oh, I, I know that he's already planning. I know that he's he's already planning to, to sort of hit a few people up. Oh, um, for Eric. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that works. Um, for Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's, and we've been looking for go people too. So, but um. One thing I wanted to just mention about the conference real quick, it, it sort of spawned out of the System D community. So it's not it's no longer the System D conference, but it is still very much kind of in that vein of Linux system world stuff. So um, it definitely has a lot of sort of package management stuff, but um, all from the view of like Linux user lands kind of system administration kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a slightly different perspective than um, I, I tend to look at package management. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. I'll catch up with you, Andrew, later to see if there's some user research or something we can set up, if that makes sense. There or somewhere else, speaking of getting more regular user feedback. So we'll do that. Anything else? You have four minutes, although a lot of us have another meeting right after this. So you could also take the four minutes to go like get a snack and get tea and not look at the screen, like get up and walk a little. It's important. Actually, yeah, we're not talking about anything else. We're getting off this call and everybody should stand up and like do a little dance or something. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>